Mental illness is more common than most people think. In Australia, almost half of us will experience a form of mental illness at some point in our lives. However, as common as these disorders are, a stigma remains surrounding mental health. This stigma is one of the biggest problems facing those of us who struggle, with two thirds of people with mental illness not seeking any support, and up to one in 10 die by suicide. The best way to eliminate the stigma is through education and understanding. This mental illness is something that means a lot to me. I wanted to learn more about it. More accurately, I wanted a way where I could tackle my own problems, as well as educate myself, whilst also having the chance to educate others. Now what's the best way to do that? Introducing the Push-Up Challenge 2020. <gasps> Whoever can do the best push-up wins the right to Headspace Australia. Okay, obviously it's not that. The Push for Better Push-Up Challenge is an annual event started in 2018, which encourages participants to complete a large number of push-ups over a certain amount of days. The number of push-ups overall represents the number of suicides in a year previous, and each day is chosen to represent a different mental health fact. So, as you work out, you're learning as well. The goal is to help reduce the number of Australian lives lost to suicide by increasing awareness of mental ill health in the community, as well as raising money for Headspace Australia. If you haven't heard of Headspace, they began in 2006 with the goal of providing tailored and holistic support to young people around 12 to 25 who are facing mental health challenges. The challenge works by having participants register as either individuals, teams, or individuals as part of teams. Then, by using the online tracker provided, each person would complete the required amount of push-ups per day, banking them in the app, whilst also learning about the significance of the number of push-ups for that day. In this way, the push-up challenge was working in three ways. One, to improve physical health. Two, to improve mental health. And three, to help connect to people and have fun. As well as banking push-ups, participants can fundraise throughout the event, with all the proceeds going towards Headspace Australia. This year, the number of push-ups is 3,046 in 21 days. <sighs> Being that it's for a good cause, and it's also going to help me with my own struggles, I felt this was a good way to learn, to contribute, and also to better myself at the same time. So, as you'd expect, I jumped at the opportunity. The night before. That's right, it took me until the night before the challenge started for me to actually sign up, even though I was keen to do it as early as February. However, my mind was set. No matter what, I was going to do these 3,046 push-ups in 21 days. But before we start this educational journey, a word from a less educational and definitely real sponsor. Hello there, I am cold. Have you ever wondered, man, if only I was strong enough to complete 3,046 push-ups in 21 days, but I don't have the muscle recovery and I can't find a good protein supplement. Introducing Definitely Real Supplement. This all-organic brand was founded in Berlin during the Cold War, making its way to Australia in the year 2222, before being transported back in time to just before I made this video. As you can see, the Definitely Not Just Meat supplement uses the finest of ingredients to ensure your muscles are ready for any push-up challenge you may be attempting with no training whatsoever. Simply add a handful of the supplement to a smoothie of your choice, adding bellies, yogurt, water, or my personal favorite, milk, and blend for a good 60 seconds before enjoying your delicious protein shake. Yummy! Now I'm ready to push up forever. I don't know why I made that. Just a disclaimer, don't eat raw meat, please. But now that that's over, let's get pushing. According to experts, having three 45 minute sessions of exercise a week can have great antidepressant benefits. All in all, this amounts to a total of 135 minutes per week. 
17.1% of Aussies were prescribed mental health medication, most of which were classed as antidepressants. These commonly work by increasing the availability of neurotransmitters in the brain that affect mood and emotion. 15.5% of the young LGBTIQA plus community have made a non-successful attempt on their lives, with that number rising to almost 50% amongst trans people. It's hard to quantify the overall monetary cost of mental ill health. However, a report made in 2019 estimates the total cost to be around $180 billion per year. Restricting phone usage every night can help increase the amount of sleep per week, somewhere up to 147 extra minutes. Having sleep disturbance at a young age can affect your mental health later in life. Disproportionate rates of suicide are present for our First Nations people, causing 26.5% of deaths in those communities, which adds up to 169 young Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Over half of all Australians experience sleep disturbance, with 14.8% of us living with sleep disruption severe enough to be classed as chronic insomnia. However, only half of these people actually identify having it. At any one moment, 20.1% or one-fifth of all Australians are living with mental ill health. Even still, half of all Australians who experience these problems will not receive professional support. Headspace provided support to young Aussies as 75% of problems present themselves before the age of 25. In 2018-2019, Headspace helped 130,000 young Australians. Feeling lonely is common, with 1.8 million Aussies identifying insufficient social support. Experts recommend making good friends rather than making hundreds, even highlighting the importance of pets. Young Aussies on average spend up to 12,000 hours per year on social media, but although the links have been found between social media and stress, studies show that 120 minutes per day can make young people feel more connected. 2.2 million Australians have been affected by intimate partner violence, greatly affecting women aged 18 to 44 years. 90% of these women will also experience mental ill health in their lifetime. Anxiety related conditions are the most common, and women experience these more commonly than men. This rises to a quarter when focusing on young women, however methods have been developed to assist those who are suffering. Living in areas of greater socio-economic disadvantage makes you twice as likely to experience psychological distress. Around 25% who have reported having mental health conditions have experienced homelessness. The glycemic index indicates how fast a food causes increases in blood sugar levels. Reports show that a glycemic load of less than 125 per day would produce positive effects. 2,320 men lost their lives to suicide, over 75% of the total. Although more women experience mental ill health, men are less likely to seek help. Under the Better Access Scheme, most people can receive rebates for up to 10 sessions with a professional. The Medicare rebate for a session with a clinical psychologist was up to $124.50. People diagnosed with mental illness are also at higher risk of physical illness. An estimated gap in life expectancy of 16.4 years arises between those with severe mental health problems and those without. And finally, it's possible that 15 minutes of sun a day or 105 minutes a week can help reduce mental distress. Once again, a range of factors are at play here, but all the while it may leaves you feeling good. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 3,046 push-ups, 21 days, over 130,000 participants, and at the time of making this video, over $5 million made. I have to admit, I'm pleasantly surprised with myself that I was able to complete all those push-ups. Overall, I'd say I feel a lot stronger. You know, I kind of feel like, like, It's now five hours later. In all seriousness, I noticed a decent change in not just how I felt physically in terms of my strength, but also mentally. I felt a lot more energetic and motivated and especially clear. 
The challenge helped me feel better in myself. It's inspired me to keep exercising in the hopes of maintaining some kind of mental clarity whilst also building muscle at the same time. Donations have been going swimmingly, if I may say so myself. I did set the target quite high, about $420, because, you know, I'm cool like that. And as you can see, actually, we do have, um, I will be raising the donation goal a little bit more, just so anyone who does want to chip in or who can donate can, but there's honestly no pressure. Again, in all seriousness, this challenge and this video have taught me a lot about mental health and mental illness, whilst also allowing me to explore my own. Especially with the world as it is at the moment, it's important that we recognize how common these issues are and that we encourage those who are struggling to seek some form of help, whether it be a professional consultation or just to chat with a friend. As well as learning about mental illness, it's important to learn how best to deal with these issues when they come up. For this, I would highly recommend the books I Had a Black Dog and Living with a Black Dog by Matthew and Ainsley Johnstone. The metaphorical representation of mental illness, specifically depression, make it easier to understand and enjoyable to read through. There's also the Black Dog Institute, another organization doing great things for mental health research and for change. The most important thing though is to be there for each other. We need to reach out to people, whether they're our friends or otherwise, and just check in on how they're doing from time to time. They might not be so responsive or open straight away, but from someone who's been in that position, having someone ask how you are, is, it means a lot. I'd like to thank everyone who's done it so far. Um, I'd also like to thank Headspace Australia for the amazing work that they do. I'd like to thank Push For Better and the Push Up Challenge as well for educating Australians around mental health issues. Take care of yourself, take care of others, and as always, don't eat raw meat.